Happy Father's Day. I'm going to sing for y'all today. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let us praise the Lord, right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, heads up, heads down, turn around, sit down. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let us praise the Lord. Ah, happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers. You know, I was thinking we spent so much time focusing on the, the bad ones. We don't, we're not thankful for all the good ones that, that do what they're supposed to be uh, as fathers. So today I want to talk to you guys about three of my favorite fathers from the Bible and a song. Okay. I have a love-hate relationship with this something person, okay? Thank you for your love and support with my new book, 10 Years a Girlfriend. Y'all, ladies, you know, today's Father's Day. However, stop making babies with men that don't want to be fathers. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that today, okay? I'm going to come back and talk about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, also, also, my book, 23 Types of Guys You Might Meet, The Naked Wife in Christ, I Am Serious. Well, so great to series. My t-shirts are also available. I have lots of little cute t-shirts over there. I have lots more coming. I wanted to do a video on my t-shirts today, um, but I have about six more designs that's out, and so I'm just going to wait. So be sure to subscribe, okay? I see my subscription went up uh, 1%, 1% from 50% to 51%, but that's still not even enough. A lot of you guys watching my content, not subscribing, coming over here, eating my food, drinking my tea, burp, ah, wiping your mouth, getting up from my table and don't even say thank you. Okay, we don't do that over here at the Church Girl Cathedral. We 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 appreciate each other. We you subscribe, okay? Um, I'm trying to get to my 10,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My camera just went a little dull. There you go. So I need you to subscribe. Check to make sure you are subscribed. Okay, I'm up to 52% subscription that's still not good enough okay all y'all little chrises okay that come over here and watch my content and eat my food drink my tea i need you little chrises to subscribe i need you to just stop acting like a little chrissy for but anyways today's father's day i'm gonna keep it nice today i'm gonna come back and talk about some other stuff okay one of my favorite fathers from the bible is boaz boaz because boaz it, it, it was so unselfish, okay? Boaz was a man who was unselfish, and he did what he needed to do. Oh, here's my big my boyfriend over here. <laughs> it's my book right here. He did what he needed to do, and he knew what doing what he, he needed to do meant. Okay, so we're going to read in verse 5 of Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse, uh, Jesse begot David the king, the king begot Solomon of, of her that had been wife of Uriah. So actually, if you are familiar with biblical law, that scripture actually read incorrectly. Yes, it did. I'm gonna tell you why. Why did that? Why is that scripture technically is incorrect? Hmm, can anybody tell me before I tell you why is Matthew chapter five? And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed. That scripture right there is wrong. Who knows why? Anybody? Somebody? That is because if you flip on over to Ruth, 
<laughs> Ruth chapter one starts a verse story and El Elimelech Naomi's husband died and she was left and her two sons and they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other was Ruth and they dwell there 10 years and Mahon and Chilion died both of them and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband come on bible study uh students <clears throat> flip on over to Ruth chapter 4 Then when Boaz up to the gate and sat down there and behold the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by unto them, he said, ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down and he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit he down here. And they sat and he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech. And I thought to advertise thee, be saying, buy it before and the inhabitants, the el before the elders of my people, if thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am thee after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, what day thou hast buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem. What does redeem? Buy back it for myself lest I mar mine own inheritance, redeem it thou by right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the manner of forming time in Israel concerning, da, 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 take off your shoes, give it to the other one. Did y'all get that? So all of y'all that keep talking about our oh, Ruth proposed to Boaz, I'm writing a book on that. So the law was when a son, when a husband died, Elimelech, his sons died without an heir. The law said the kinsman redeemer is to marry the widow of the wife and raise up a son to, for him to get his father's inheritance. So in other words, this other kinsman redeemer was to marry Ruth and her firstborn son would get the inheritance. The man said, uh -uh, I'm not about to do that. I'm gonna mess up my own inheritance. Plus I'm gonna mess stuff up for my kids. Boaz, who was childless and marriageless said, okay, I will redeem it. And Boaz understood that Ruth's firstborn son, verse 18. Hold on, little Michael, I have the TV too loud. Verse 18, Ruth 2, verse 18. And she took it up on, went in the city, and her, I'm sorry, verse uh, 5, Ruth 4. Then said Boaz, what those by the field and thought to advertise. Buy it before the inhabitants of the elder. Thou wilt redeem it, redeem it, but if thou will know. Mm -hmm. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise him up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So Ruth's first son was not Boaz. It wasn't supposed to be Boaz. It's supposed to be her and her, her husband. I don't remember which one her husband, Mahon or Chila. I think it was Chila was her husband. Mm -hmm. 
So some people believe Boaz died the night they got married. I'm going to come back and talk about that, okay? Ask Daddy to help you. So Ruth and Boaz got married, had a, dad is in the kitchen, Michael, had a baby. And in actuality, the baby does not belong to either Ruth or Boaz. Well, technically it's Ruth's baby, right? But it's not Boaz's baby, according to the law. According to the law, the baby belongs to Ruth's dead husband to raise up an inheritance to his father and his grandfather, Elimelech and Mahon, Chiron, whichever one of them. But look why I say it's not Ruth's baby. Look what happened in Ruth chapter four, Verse four, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law, the mother of her dead husband. Okay. Blessed be the Lord, which had not left thee this day without a kinsman that his name may be famous in Israel and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age for the daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Do you know what that means? When Naomi put the baby to her breast, God allowed milk to flow. The old grandmother. Verse 17, and the woman, her neighbors gave it a name saying, there is a son born to Naomi. And they call his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. So when you flip on over to Matthew chapter five, I think I can only, I'd only have time to do one of them today, okay? When you flip on over to Matthew chapter one, verse five, in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth and Obed begot. It's wrong. It is supposed to read, Salmon begat uh, Boaz of Rahab and Boaz became the kinsman redeemer of Chilon or Malon, who begot Obed. That's what he should say. But I really believe that God saw what Boaz did and said, uh-uh, put Boaz's name right here in Matthew 1, verse 5. It's supposed, you're not supposed to say Boaz legally. It's supposed to say, and Salmon begat Boaz, the kinsman redeemer of Chilon or Milan, I can't remember which one, who begot Obed. But, but because Boaz was so unselfish that God put his name in there. Isn't that something? How many of y'all knew that? I feel my freeze coming out. Real quick. Father number two is Joseph. Joseph was another one. Remember, he was Joseph, the son, the husband of Mary. He, he was engaged to Mary. Guess what he was doing in the time? He was building her a house. Okay, I'm not going to say it. I ain't going to say it. I'm just going to put the shirt up there, okay? 
And during the time she was found with child and she he loved her, he said, I'm going to put her away privately. And God spoke to her. The angel Gabriel said, no, no, no. Don't put her away because the thing that's within her is a holy thing. Take her. Make her your wife and her firstborn son. Name him Jesus. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Come on, somebody. My third father is Abraham. Abraham had one chosen son, Isaac. And when it was time for Isaac to choose a wife, Abraham said, no, 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 no. Don't take my son over there. Uh, he's He's been so sheltered. This is when you study. He's been sheltered. He don't know. So he sent Eleazar to choose a son. And I, when I read that, I said, my God, this father knew his son and wanted to protect him. But the son trusts the daddy enough to say amen. My whatever, one of them father, is Laban. I really have a love-hate relationship with hate Laban. Laban, hate is a strong word, okay? I love what he did for Rachel. When Jacob came and Laban's asked him, what is, your, what is your wages? He said, let me marry Rachel. Laban said, hold up, hold up now, hold up. How are you going to take care of my daughter? And Jacob said, well, I'm going to work seven years. And Laban said, okay, after. After you've worked. Seven years, you know what I mean? Tested, tried, you've earned some money. You show me you can protect my daughter and take care of her. Then you can have her. Not marrying him on a potential. You know some of y'all ladies, but anyways, that's not what we're talking about. And then we know what he did. My problem with Laban is he knew nobody wanted Le Leah. Why didn't you... Fix her up, put some makeup on her, put some silk and take her over to the other city and marry and get her a good husband. And so these women, two women spend their, their years warring for the love of Jacob. And Jacob never loved Leah, but guess what he was doing every night? Mm -hmm. All right, I have to run. Let me know what you think. Who's your favorite fathers in the Bible? I'm coming right back to talk about DMX baby mama. Okay, come on back, come on back. I love you. Thank you for your love and support. My books are available on Amazon. Be sure to check that out. I love you. Got to go. Bye. Happy Father's Day to all the wonderful dads. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being the example of Christ, provider, protector, professor. Ladies, don't marry no man that you got to take care of and be his mama. Bye, girl.